are roller skates, and I'm going to build my own pair using only bikes. So here's what I got. Two bikes that are 100% identical. So I need to figure out a way to ride these bikes like roller skates. So to start, there was a lot of unnecessary things to strip off this bike, like the brake assembly, the seats, the chain, this thing, the pedals, handlebars, the kickstand. It doesn't even work. Really, the only thing I need is the frame and the wheels. So I started dismantling the bike, removing all the components until I only had the bare frames and the wheels. Now I gotta figure out a way to get this to stop turning, because that's just an accident waiting to happen. The idea here was to drill a hole through the steering column and put a pin through it to stop the front wheels from turning. But they still had some wiggle to it, so I had my friend weld them in place. Okay, so these things are pretty solid. Then I just needed to figure out a way to stand on them without breaking all my bones. So after staring at the bikes from two different angles, I got my first idea. So I just cut these two metal rods. I wanna put them up here so I can like put some foot straps up here. Which unfortunately means that I'm gonna have to cut this off. So I should be all ready to start working on the foot straps, but I have to go to the store because this tire has a big old hole in it. So I picked up a new tube and a new tire, slapped that boy on there, and it was good as new. Now I was able to weld the bars on, but once they were on there, I was stuck once again. All right, I need to figure out a way to get my foot right here. So I was thinking maybe I could like screw a board to the top and then get like an old pair of shoes and screw the pair of shoes into the board, but no, snowboard bindings. So snowboard bindings are attached to the snowboard using these little plate thingies. I don't know what they're called. So I drilled a couple holes into the plate thingy so I could use these big bolts to attach the bindings to the bikes, like so. I'm strapped into this first one here. They don't feel as heavy as I thought they would. Oh my god. Getting these on by myself was a difficult and hilarious looking process. No matter what I did, I couldn't get up on my feet. So I sat on a table and had my friend help me out. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> There's no way. I didn't trust this thing for a second, and I was gonna have to find another way. Then I got a great idea. I need, like, uh, training wheels. So it was back to the store for training wheels. All right, I've got a set of training wheels for each wheel, so this should... Sorry. So this should keep me up. I assembled the wheels, attached them to the bikes, and gave it another shot. I should really have some adult supervision. I was barely able to creep forward on these things, and even after an hour of practice, I still wasn't getting anywhere. I'm literally going to die. Rather than having the bindings up on top, where it's really flimsy and hard to balance and all that stuff, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna mount them on the bars like this and weld this bar on the bottom of the bike, lowering my center of gravity, making it way easier to balance, making it way easier to like lift my leg with all the weight on there. Once the bindings were welded on the sides, it was looking pretty cool and it was much easier to strap in by myself. Balancing was also not as terrible, but I still had no control. So by using some pieces of sheet metal and the pool noodle from the snorkel I built to run a mile underwater, I was able to build some state-of-the-art leg straps that would hold my legs tight to the frames, giving me more balance and control. Yo, I can actually move on these things, what? Yo, what? They were honestly working better than I expected, but it still wasn't great. I needed to make some adjustments. Something still isn't right. But I couldn't quite figure it out. So after some sick aesthetic changes, I brought them out to a bike path for the first official test. So I figured I'd try these things out on some flat ground since we all know what happened the last time I brought one of my creations down a hill. So to help me keep my balance and get my bearings, I made ski poles using broom handles and rubber feet. This is awfully terrifying. So after a while, I was getting some decent speed. This is too fast. But I still had little to no control. Your pizza doing? French fry. And turning around was a total nightmare. I'm going backwards. Now don't get me wrong, it was really cool that I accidentally invented a new extreme sport. These are cross country skatesicles. But I wasn't getting anywhere. One out of 10 impressed. How impressed are you? Like six. Six? Six. Six out of 10 impressed? I needed at least an 8 out of 10. There were so many issues that had to be solved, so many things that could be improved. But if I ever wanted to impress my friend with working skates, I was going to have to do better. Okay, we're back in the shop and I've learned a lot. First off, these tires are too big. They don't let me get a full stride. Like this. I want to be able to do one of these. Also, these bikes are way too heavy. So really, the only way to fix this is to use smaller bikes. Which gives me no other option but to start over. So I threw my original design away and ran all the way to the Amazon to get two smaller bikes, which I thought would be great, but the wheels were too flimsy to hold me and I had to go all the way back to the Amazon to get two more bikes. 
All right, let's do this. So now I had a pile of bikes and a lot of work to do. These bikes were a lot smaller, a lot lighter, and the wheels were much smaller, so I assumed they would work much better. These were Strider bikes, so they didn't have any pedals, so the only things I had to remove were the seats and the handlebars, which came off pretty easy. Then I just had the frames and the wheels. I drilled holes in the steering column to stop the front wheels from spinning, which worked way better this time around. Once I had all four bikes ready to go, it was time to mount the bindings. Let's do it. So to do that, I cut some pieces of angle iron to bolt the bindings onto. Then it was time to weld the bikes together and the bindings to the bikes. Then they were done. I was beyond nervous to test these out because these bikes were designed for toddlers and I have the weight of approximately seven toddlers, but they were holding my weight surprisingly well and they were much lighter and easier to control. But there was still a problem. I still have little to no ankle support, but I think that if I try these with boots instead of sneakers, then it should be fine. Alrighty, I got boots, let's do this. So I spent the first 20 minutes just putzing around, trying to get comfortable, you know, just learning how to ride these things, because after all, like, what even are these things? They're ridiculous, right? Yeah, but anyway, I started getting some speed rolling down this hill. <laughs> the improvements I made were definitely working, and I was able to control these much better than the previous model, and I was able to get a decent stride, too. I knew that was gonna happen at some point. But just like any skill or sport, the longer I spent on it, the more confident I got. Maybe a little too confident. I've spent all this time trying to make these things perfect, and I forgot that I'm just really bad at roller skating. I could definitely get good at this. Well, maybe not me, but somebody could. So I let my uncle try them, and he sucked. But it was time to show my friend Jake and impress him once and for all. Check this these looks, things out. This looks yeah? Much better. Much better? Way. Yeah? Better. How impressed are you now? Nine out of ten. Nine out Nine of ten? Out of ten. But he couldn't be too sure until he tried them out for himself. Somebody if, if, with enough practice, you could. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's all I got.